Hey everyone, Theron Asbury here with Revital Outdoors, bringing you another exciting podcast. Tonight we're going back to the Sooner State. We're going to go back to my home state of Oklahoma. We're going to talk to Mr. Cade Allsbury. Cade got a top 10 finish last year at the BFL Okie Division Tournament on Lake Eufaula. That same tournament's coming up this coming weekend, so Cade's going to kind of give us an idea of what he was doing last year, what he predicts for this year. You don't want to miss this. There's a lot of changing conditions going on on Lake Eufaula. It could be very, very challenging for the anglers fishing the Okie Division Tournament this weekend, so stick around. You're going to want to hear all the, what Cade has to say. Before we get started, Revital Outdoors is still taking entries for our very exciting $2,500 giveaway uh, sweepstakes package. That lucky angler will be chosen at the end of the VFL season. We've got great companies such as Flambeau Outdoors, Costa Del Mar, Seaguar Line, The Rod Glove, Blue, Strike King, and Tackle Warehouse in on this giveaway. So you're not going to want to miss this. A lot of great stuff up for grabs for this giveaway. So go ahead and click that link at the top of the description right below this video. It takes three, sec three seconds to get in. And... Uh, Maybe you'll be the lucky winner. Uh, check us out on Facebook and Instagram. That's Revital Outdoors. Subscribe to our YouTube channel. If you've never heard of Revital Outdoors, we are a premium CBD company. We offer premium CBD products to all the outdoor enthusiasts out there. Check them out on our website. You can purchase them directly off our website as well. And, and always remember our products are uh, THC-free and made right here in America. That being said, let's go ahead and bring Cade right into the studio from the great state of Oklahoma. Cade, how you doing this evening, buddy? Good, man. How are you? I'm doing good, doing good. Man, you know, you and I fished against each other many, many years back before yes, I went to college and moved off and uh, got yeah. the big boy job here in Florida. Um, you've been around the Okie Division for more than 10 years. You know your way around all the lakes. Yeah. Fort Gibson, you follow. Grand, you do good at all of them. I think there's a couple times in there you've even made a run for Angler of the Year in the Okie Division. So tell us yes, a little please. bit about uh, Lake Eufaula. Last year, top 10 finish. What do you predict for this year? Break it down for a little, a little bit. So, man, this tournament every year is probably my favorite one, one of my favorite. Uh, seems to be the most consistent pattern-wise for, for me. Uh, outside of the top ten last year, I know I finished maybe either second or third or two seconds in a row there on this event. Uh, man, it just sets up every year seems like it sets up to be a, a real power, shallow water deal for at least myself. I know there's guys that, that may catch them offshore. Probably not this event because the water's recently come up way high. But uh, but it, it's going to be a shallow water event. You know, everybody thinks there's probably no spawning fish, but there, there will be some spawning fish, not visually caught. Uh, but they're still going to be in that shallow water, you know, probably spawn and post-spawn, you know, and obviously with the warm weather we've got that hit us this week, there's going to be should be a good shad spawn going as well yeah you know the spawn growing up a cowboys fan because my dad went to oklahoma state the spawn reminds me of watching oklahoma state football every time you get that warming trend everything gets going good oh no penalty cold front yeah. comes in knocks it down you know 10, 10 yeah. days or something like that so literally i've seen just from my experience it the, the fish start spawning in early march late february and then you st start getting that kind of roller coaster effect of cold weather, warm weather, and yeah. they'll absorb their eggs. Or you'll see them, you know, with bloody tails all the way up to the first week of June. It seems like. Yeah. So last year, this this event last year uh, started out on a shad spawn deal. Caught a couple. Wasn't doing real good. So about nine thirty, I called a little audible and I told the guys that we're getting, we're going to change it up as far as areas anyway, and uh, ended up doing good. Caught caught a bunch of fish, but that day I'm going down the bank and I was fishing some real particular type of stuff. And, uh, I told that I was catching them on a spinnerbait. I was catching them on a half ounce, uh, covert spinnerbait, double Colorado. And, uh, I told the guy, I said, there's a fish right there. And I mean, obviously the water was dirty where I was at and, uh, looked down there and sure enough, I pulled down and sat there and there was a fish spawning on on a bed i would assume and uh, her tail was completely out of the water and and it was a big one i mean it was a four and a half to you know it, it was a one of those you want in the in your boat at the end of the day for sure and uh, i never did catch her but i did catch a couple around her you know whether that was maybe a male or, or what have you but i went back there a couple times and, and tried to catch her but i didn't but those fish uh every year and i, and I don't at least in our region you know, here in Oklahoma, just like you said, 
they'll start the end of March and they're still going normally the middle of May. I mean, it really shocked me here a couple of weeks ago at the Toyota series at Grand that uh, how how much how many fish hadn't started. You know, I knew there mm-hmm. were some that had already started, but as the tournament went on, you know, I become to realize that there was still a lot more coming the end of April, first of May than what there normally is, you know, in years past. I noticed that watching the weigh-in myself is there was a lot of fish that were really dark, still really fat. Yep. You could tell they were feeding up. You could tell they came out of shallow water. And they you didn't even resemble a fish that looked at, like that was look, getting ready for it yet. Correct. Meaning they didn't have the red lips on them. They didn't have that clay underbelly on them. They're still in that pre-spawn mode. I was very yep. surprised myself with that. You know, one thing you just hit on, talking about that fish you saw on a bed, saw the tail out of the water that I will enlighten on in the state of Oklahoma is with uh, Grand Lake, Texoma, uh, Lake Eufaula. I've seen it on uh, Sam Rayburn down in Texas. Those four lakes, and I haven't really ever seen it, you know, elsewhere. And, you know, maybe there's been other guys that have experienced it. But for some reason about those four lakes especially, sometimes you'll get up to two or three males with one female on a bed. Yep. It's crazy yeah. how that works. No doubt. So, I mean, I – kind of kick it away from you follow here for just a second but you know at the toyota series i've seen that uh i've seen that at grand i've seen it at you follow you know it, and i've even caught one male come back and you know there'll be like you said there'll be another male uh but you know i mean this kind of getting back on topic i guess you know this you follow tournament this year should be great you know one year I want to say about four years ago, I got a second and the lake come up four foot overnight. Uh, and and that's real tough conditions. I mean, I, I'd rather be lucky than good any day, obviously. And and I feel there's was a little bit of luck involved, you know, just making the right timing calls of of where to start and so on and so forth. But, uh, you know, that day I I swam a black and blue, uh, mobster swim jig all day and, and, you know, had 16 pounds. So uh, that was kind of back before in the uh, trial test period of the, of the mobster swim jig, obviously, before everybody knew about it after Chris Jones made it so popular at, at the Classic. But, uh, you know, I would say definitely the, the swim jig is going to play, you know, any type of your favorite flipping bait is going to play, spinner bait is going to play big time this, this weekend down there. What do you think it's going to take weight-wise? Man, you followed really impressed me the last few years, uh, the way it's progressing and, and the, the fish it's got in it. Uh, I, I still look for it to take probably right around the 19 to 21 pound mark uh, to win. You know, I mean, Chris Jones weighed a nine pounder down there in our first BFL. Uh, probably not going to happen again, I wouldn't think, as far as a nine pounder, but you know, it wouldn't shock me that a seven, it takes one, you know, close to seven or a little over to win big bass. There'll be a seven pounder. They're yeah. always, uh, you follow They're just, they're always, so, uh, here. you know, the, the only thing that would decrease the weights a little bit is, is the way the waters really come up a bunch. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I think it's this week, it's given those fish a little bit of time to acclimate to the weather and everything. So I, I still expect it to take, take a four pound average probably to win the event. Good deal. Good deal. So well, last question before we let you go, what about a co-angler in this event going into it? I know there's going to be a lot of guys up shallow covered in a lot of water. What's a co-angler got to do to be successful in this event? Man. So here's what I try to tell all my co-anglers. Uh, Oklahoma is probably a tough, a tough division for a co-angler in my opinion, just because we fish a lot of shallow water events. Uh, I, if I had one thing, and, and I myself this year really leaned on this bait, uh, I would go with like a Magnum style or a, a heavy wire shaky head, you know, whatever. I'm using shaky head as a, a wide, broad term, you know, uh, whether you use like a pumpkin head head or, or some type of a shaky head hook. Uh, and I would I – would, Get a you know a young dinger style bait, and I would I'd rig that, and that's what I'd flip. That's what I'd drag behind my boater. Uh, man, it's just really got me a lot of baits 
And this year, I'm not having to flip. I'm not having to throw it on a spinning rod. And especially with the, the lake being flooded, you know, you get that little. Still using a quarter ounce, you know, five sixteenths to a quarter ounce. But the hook I'm throwing in the one I'm using right now is a heavier wire, so I can still put it on my bait caster, twenty pound line. Uh, just finished the a BFL event at Table Rock last week. Same type of conditions, flooded event. And I caught all my fish that day on it. So uh, it, it's really been a player this year. Good deal. Good deal. So, okay, I'd really appreciate you coming on to the podcast. Again, for all the listeners out there, we've been talking to Mr. Kate Allsbury, a top 10 angler from last year's BFL Oki Division tournament on Lake Eufaula. Again, that same tournament's coming up this weekend. So good luck to Kate. Good luck to all the BFL Oki Division uh, tournament anglers. Before we let everybody go, make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel. Also, you've been seeing the rotating banner below uh, this video. Hit that link at the top of the description right below this video. Get into our $2,500 sweepstakes giveaway. Uh, you're not going to want to miss this, and that lucky angler will be selected at the end of the year. From all of us at Revital Outdoors, I'm Theron Asbury. Thank you for tuning into this podcast. Be safe out there. God bless everybody. We'll talk to everyone very, very soon. Thanks, Theron.